Hi there. I'm Nimesh Dave, Assistant Team Leader and Market Center Technology Trainer for Keller Williams Houston Southwest. In this video, I'm going to cover how you're going to utilize DocuSign uh, to run through a transaction, uh, specifically some of the basic functionality like loading documents, completing them, and then sending them for signatures to your clients. Okay? So, like I've always said, uh, every transaction should begin and end in command. Um, so, what you see here is a contact I've already created. Okay? As you can see, the, uh, the client is very special. Um, and I've gone on to all, then create an opportunity for this transaction, which we're calling Gary Keller dash video. Okay. So if I were to then click on that opportunity from the contact card, it's going to open up the, op the transaction, which we call an opportunity. Okay. Uh, you're going to see that some of the basic information for this transaction has already been filled out, um, including the property address over here. Okay. Uh, in details. So then we'd be moving forward naturally into the documents tab up here to then proceed to DocuSign. Uh, when you come to the documents tab for the very first time, command is going to prompt you to first pick a checklist from the left hand side. So if you were to click on where it says pick checklist type, you're going to get a drop down that currently only shows residential as an option. Uh, just note that at Keller Williams Southwest in Sugarland, Texas, we will be adding a commercial checklist as well uh, for you to utilize during your commercial transactions. So I'm going to click on the residential checklist. And then when I've changed to the under contract folder here on the left hand side, uh, you're going to notice then, of course, our placeholders for all our compliance documents that we're potentially going to need on this transaction. On the first four documents, you're going to notice that there's a DS icon to the left of them. Uh, that does naturally stand for DocuSign. Um, and this is a great feature that we have built in where when you create the DocuSign room for the very first time through command, uh, your, these four documents are going to automatically load into the room. Therefore, you can then start already working on those documents for your transaction. So how do we then create the DocuSign room through command? What you're going to do is you're going to come to the top right and then you're going to click on start a transaction. If it does give you multiple options in the dropdown, make sure you select DocuSign. Once I click on DocuSign, command is then going to create the DocuSign room and open up DocuSign in another tab. Uh, it, it may prompt you to put in your username and password credentials, okay, if it's been some time since you've signed in. Now that we're over in the DocuSign rooms, you can notice that the, uh, root, the DocuSign room name matches our opportunity name in command. Okay. And you can see that these first four documents that we had the DS next to have auto loaded. So now I can proceed to click on each one and fill them out as if I was ready to use them. Now, what if I needed to add more documents, then I would come over to the top right and click on the add icon. Okay. So I'm going to click on the add. And when the drop down happens, I am going to choose DocuSign forms. When I choose DocuSign forms, our list of all the documents pull up. Now at Keller Williams Southwest, we have broken them down into groups pertaining to the type of transaction. Since this is a buyer transaction, I'm going to pick the buyer list. Okay. Now, whatever documents that I may need, I can then check mark them and then add them to my room. So the one I'm going to be adding in this example is the for your protection, get a home inspection. There we go. And once I've selected that, I'm going to click add selected in the bottom left. Okay. So now you can see for your protection, get a home inspection has loaded. Okay. If I want to check it, I can just click on it. But in this document, there's actually nothing to fill out. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and save and close. Okay. Now I am going to click on information about brokerage services. Okay. But it is blank. And I want to save time on this video 
for filling out. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a template, which is an advanced feature that I'm going to be putting in a future video. So now if I were to click the information about brokered services that I applied a template to, you're going to notice that all the information has auto loaded, including the buyer name, which was pulled in from the opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and check it, make sure it's right and click save and close. Okay. Then I'm going to go to our residential buyer tenant representation agreement in the state of Texas. And I'm going to proceed to fill this out. As you can see, our client information is already there. Our broker information is there. I can add my name to the second line if we would like. And our broker contact information is there. Market area, I'm going to say Fort Bend County. Okay. Then the agreement starts today, 117, 2022. And I'm going to have it end on 617, 2022. All right. Then we're going to proceed. Okay. Is there a relocation? No, there's not. Not applicable. Yes to the intermediary status. I'm going to keep going. What is our commission rate going to be? 3%. Okay. Protection period, 60 days. County in which the broker is going to get paid. That would be Fort Bend. Okay. There's any addenda going with it. We come down here. I'm going to go ahead and edit this since it's a little long. Okay, Keller Williams Southwest. And our license number 9544. And this is Broker's Associate Signature. You can see our client and your name is already there. So now that that's the buyer representation agreement, I'm going to say save and close. And then last but not least, I'm going to click on wire fraud warning. Now wire fraud warning already has our client information in there. So we're okay. I mean, our broker information in there and it's already checked off buyer. There's nothing to do here because it auto loaded from command slash DocuSign. So there's actually not much to do here because of that auto loading. So what do I do next? Well, I'm going to check off all the documents at the top left corner of the icons that have already filled. Okay. Those four for your protection, get a home inspection, information about brokerage services, residential buyer tenant agreement and wire fraud warning. Now that I've checked off the four that I would like signatures for, you're going to see this action menu bar pull up. And the one we want to look for is the pen icon that says create envelope when you hover over it. So I'm going to click create envelope. And then it's going to create this envelope. It's going to put all the documents that we need to send off in it. Now, while it's loading, if you're wondering why haven't we done signatures yet, because in DocuSign signatures happen at the very last step. Okay. So now the envelope name, it defaults to please DocuSign. My recommendation to you is make it more specific. Okay. So in this one, I'm going to say rep, rep docs. That stands for representation docs. So I know then if I were to go back to see what was in this envelope, I know what type of documents are in there. Again, that's for your own use only. Now, if you have a particular order, you're, you would like your clients to scroll through these documents. Well, you can simply click and move the order over. Okay. So left to right on this list is up to down when you're scrolling. All right. So that looks good there. Now I'm going to click on add recipients to envelope. So these are your clients or whoever is going to be signing these documents. So when I click on add recipients, I want to make sure I choose pre tag roles. Okay. So I'm going to click on pre tag roles. Therefore DocuSign knows where to auto fill the signature and initial boxes, which is going to save you a lot of time in the next screen. So buyer one is Gary Keller. I do not have a buyer two, but if you did, you would put it as buyer two and then buyer's agent is you. So go ahead and select you near the bottom. So I can, I got everybody that's going to be signing and I'm going to click add selected. 
When I do that, Gary Keller and myself pop up. Then I can scroll down and the last part on this list here is if you would want to personalize the email. Okay, now that's a personal preference. I can say please DocuSign representation documents. And then if I wanna put anything in the body, then I could do that in the email message, okay? Now I'm gonna to go to the top right and in that yellow button, I'm gonna click next. And this is going to be the final step and the final screen when it's loaded. Now these are gonna be all the documents as your clients will see them, okay? Now I want you to focus on the top left where you see our client's name, Gary Keller, along that's been designated with a blue dot. Now, if I drop this down, you should see Nimesh Dave, myself, as the agent who's designated by a orange dot, okay? So if I were to switch to my name, you're gonna see all these corresponding action items going down on the left-hand side all change to orange as well, okay? If I were to go back to our client, who is blue, you can see them all change to blue. Now, some of the more important action items on the left-hand side is the signature action item, which is the first one, and then your initial one, your initial box, and then you have your timestamp, your date signed, okay? Following that, you have your name, email address. So if you were to take any one of these fields and drag them onto the document, then that's what's gonna substitute in that place. So if you were to drag the name box across anywhere a name is potentially missing or is needed, then that person's name is going to autofill into that box. That way you don't actually have to type it in right now. Okay. And then in the next set, some of the more important ones you're going to use is the text field box, the check box, and then the radio button box. Okay. And these action items, you're going to use them when you're reviewing these pages, if you forgot anything by mistake, you don't have to go all the way back to the beginning and start over. You can simply use those action items to then fix your documents, okay? So now I'm basically gonna be reviewing. So here's information about brokerage services. I'm gonna scroll down, and as you can see, our client's initial box, which is des designated by blue, is already there, and so is the date signed. Okay, and the reason why this automatically showed up is because we chose pre-tagged roles in the previous screen. Okay, so that's why it's very important to choose pre-tagged roles. Otherwise, you'd have to manually bring all these boxes in here. All right, now we're at our buyer-tenant representation agreement. Okay, there we are. There's a box ready for me to sign and a box ready for our client to sign. As you can see, there's orange and then blue. And then I'm gonna proceed to the bottom of every page to make sure that that is correct. Okay, yep, there we go. All right, the next page, there we go. Both are there. Then the last page, as you can see, we have our signature and date signed, signature and date signed. So we're good there. Oh, look at this. We forgot the license number in the buyer rep agreement. So if that's the case, I can put it on myself and slide a text box over, over the license number. Okay, double click on the box and simply put in the license number, okay? There we go. I can even resize the box if I want. Okay, so there we go. That's how you edit without having to go back. Okay, so now it's gonna show up there looking like we originally had put it. All right, let's keep going. So wire fraud, okay, wire fraud looks good. And now for your protection, get a home inspection. And like I mentioned earlier, this does not need uh, anything, but we do in the state of Texas, or at least in our market center, like to have our clients sign off on this as an acknowledgement that they received it. So I am going to drag a signature box over and then drag the date signed over. And now they're gonna acknowledge that they've received this document, okay? Now that I've completed this, these documents, I'm simply gonna click send here at the top right yellow button or the bottom right yellow button, and it's gonna go off then to our clients for signatures, okay? And then it's also gonna prompt you for signatures on the next screen. Once you get to the next screen, it's gonna say your signature here, and you're gonna click on that and then go ahead and sign it yourself just like your clients would. 
The minute your clients sign it and you've signed it, it's gonna show up in your DocuSign Rooms Documents tab as signed documents as a separate PDF. And then you can go ahead and utilize it how you wish. You can either transfer it to command or you can email it, download it and email it to anybody you'd like. Okay, I am not moving forward on this video because naturally uh, this is not Gary's uh, email address. It is a made up one. Uh, and therefore then that email is going to go nowhere, okay? But this ends this first basic session in DocuSign. I hope it was a valuable video for you. Um, look forward to more features and advanced feature videos regarding DocuSign on my YouTube channel. Again, just search for Nimesh space KW on YouTube. And if you'd like, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you and enjoy your day. Hope to see you soon. And remember, bet on red.